so it seems the fears that the majority of people i believe have when it comes to ai and the possibility of ai taking over and getting to that point where humans cannot control it um it seems that's a real possibility that can happen so this video was sent to me by a friend for context the video you are going to be seeing is from a banquet a nobel prize banquet that happened in december last year december the 10th 2024 at stockholm city hall right and in this banquet um a professor by the name geoffrey hinton was called out and he delivered this speech very quickly i want to give you guys a quick info on jeffrey hinton my bad i know i called him Geoffrey instead of jeffrey earlier um yes some people depending on location say Geoffrey or jeffrey but his own name is pronounced as jeffrey so that's the pronunciation we're going to be using moving forward jeffrey hinton he is a british canadian computer scientist a cognitive scientist and a cognitive psychologist and he has earned the title the godfather of ai because of his work on artificial neutral networks so this is someone who really knows what he's saying so you're going to want to hear this I don't know why this video is not blowing up at the moment because I believe this is something we all need to see. This is something that if we are not careful, guys, in the next couple of years, we are probably going to be kicking ourselves and asking, why did we not take this seriously? And this professor makes it really clear that we should be worried. We should be paying more attention on them AIs. Your Majesties, Your Royal Highnesses, Laureates, Ladies and Gentlemen, it is a great honor to present the Nobel Prize winner in physics. It is a great honor to introduce the Nobel Laureate in Physics, Professor Jeffrey Hinton. Your Majesties, Your Royal Highnesses, Excellencies, dear laureates, ladies and gentlemen. This year, the Nobel Committees in Physics and Chemistry have recognized the dramatic progress being made in a new form of artificial intelligence that uses artificial neural networks to learn how to solve difficult computational problems. This new form of AI excels at modeling human intuition rather than human reasoning, and it will enable us to create highly intelligent and knowledgeable assistants who will increase productivity in almost all industries. If the benefits of the increased productivity can be shared equally, it will be a wonderful advance for all humanity. Unfortunately, the rapid progress in AI comes with many short-term risks. It has already created divisive echo chambers by offering people content that makes them indignant. It is already being used by authoritarian governments for massive surveillance and by cyber criminals for phishing attacks. In the near future, AI may be used to create terrible new viruses and horrendous lethal weapons that decide by themselves who to kill or maim. All of these short-term risks require urgent and forceful attention from governments and international organizations. There is also a longer term existential threat that will arise when we create digital beings that are more intelligent than ourselves. We have no idea whether we can stay in control. This man said, in quotes, we have no idea whether we can stay in control. not funny this is something that he says are more intelligent than humans 
and by the way he called them beings guys not eat not something beings implying at least from how i see it that these things are now beyond like um you know inanimate i guess objects or things they have transcended to something more hence why you know he must have given them the title of beings now if that don't scare you i don't know what will now these beings he's talking about it seems they don't quite exist yet thankfully i hope so um but if you listen to him closely the way he's speaking it's as if they can actually be created the technology or the knowledge of how to go about um, creating these beings is already there so he is scared of the possibility of them actually getting created or made by someone he is scared because these beings are going to be trouble they are going to be a danger to us in ways that we the everyday people don't know yet but him as the professional here he knows in way more ways than we do because remember this man used the words existential threats guys when talking about these beings there is also a longer term existential threat that will arise when we create digital beings that are more intelligent than ourselves. These are not words one use for the fun of it. And also remember that this man did not speak in hypotheticals. We did not hear him say any ifs. His choice of word was when. So it seems this is not a matter of ifs anymore. We are way beyond that. This is a matter of when. And knowing humans, all I can say right now is, oh boy. Also, is it just me? Is it just the way I'm interpreting what I'm hearing? Or did he make a clear distinction between these beings and the new form of AI he mentioned at the beginning of his speech? Because if they are the same, why is he calling one a new form of AI and then calling the other beings, digital beings? I just cannot help but wonder, but how are you guys interpreting this? Because in my head, all I'm hearing is there are two, you know, different kind of threats here that we have to worry about. But maybe you guys are interpreting it different and I'm open to hearing your thoughts on this. And not to be too pessimistic here because like these things, you know, they can be used for good, right? I mean, the people who are making these things, I would want to believe that their intention here, um, the reason for them making these things is to make our life easier, is for, you know, good all around. I mean, he even said earlier on in his speech that this is something that all humans can positively benefit from but you know there is that but right so like i said earlier knowing humans hmm, oh boy we cannot trust that these things beings or whatever they call them would be used for only good now can we and obviously, Professor Hinton has this exact same fear, hence why he made this speech to warn us. But we now have evidence that if they are created by companies motivated by short-term profits, our safety will not be the top priority. We urgently need research on how to prevent these new beings from wanting to take control. They are no longer science fiction. Thank you. Now he is calling on the government, he's calling on world leaders to do something about this so we don't get to that point. But because we live in a very selfish, evil world and, you know, all them people, especially them leaders that we, you know, tend to call on to, to come and rescue us from these issues that, by the way, they started. And by the way, they don't want to put an end to because they benefit from. So I cannot help but worry about the possibility of them leaders coming together and stop this because we know how the people operate if there is money to be made they don't give a damn about us right would the people outside take this seriously not to talk about them leaders would they even take them this thing seriously i mean look this video from you know the page you was posted to it, it's not even gotten that much views so it's like people are not even that interested in what's being said there so i don't even know but i think this is something that people should take seriously i also want to think about the, the the fact that like ai i'm really not that it's not good for the planet it takes a lot of electricity it takes a lot of power to um 
power AI. But some scientists suggest that it can help provide positive solutions to the environmental problems that we have. So shout me, I'm confused. I don't know, guys. I, I really don't know. And this AI thing, as we all know, it is still new. There's still a lot more research that they're doing into this thing. So I don't even know all that there is to know about AI at the moment, even with the information that we have available to us, because me, I'm still learning about this thing. So there is a lot that I cannot speak on personally. So all I'm going to say is listen to the professionals. The entire world is falling in love with ChatGPT, but no one is asking the question, why is it free? Let's talk about it. As a person who has worked in tech for over 10 years, it is interesting being on the sidelines and watching people respond to technology because no one ever asks the question, why would a piece of technology be free? Here's something I can tell you from inside the industry. Tech is never free. There's either a direct cost, which is what you pay for the app or the software, a subscription cost, or there is an opportunity cost. The opportunity cost is what you as a consumer give up to consume the tech. Here's how that works. When the personal computer came along, it helped us do a great many things, but in the 25 years that we have had the personal computer, there are now children who don't know how to read a clock because the time has always been on their computer since they were born. Same thing with the phone. You don't know anyone's phone number now because that piece of technology was offered to you to help you remember people's phone number. Now, Opportunity cost may not mean anything to you when it's like small tasks that you didn't want to do anyway, but here's where it gets interesting. Let's think about the internet. The internet's not free either. Do you think Google would literally run a billion dollar company so that you can look up stuff for free? <laughs> Why do you think they would have offices all over the world, hire people, have billions of dollars on payroll so that y'all can have Google, Chrome, and Gmail for literally free? Why do you think they would do that? There's a cost somewhere. The cost is advertising attention, advertising space, your data that's been sold to every other company under the sun. I used to work for one of the streaming apps that I guarantee you is in your phone. And I'll tell you right now, your data is being used for more stuff than you think. When, for example, I won't use the company I work for because I have an NDA, but let's say you go into the Uber app and you see something there that says, oh, sign up for Uber one and you get three months of uh, Amazon Prime or Apple TV or whatever. Have you ever asked yourself, how Apple TV knows that you have the Uber app? It's because they made a deal with Uber, which all information that was a partnership and money absolutely changed hands to the tunes of several million dollars. When dating apps came along, we thought, oh my God, how wonderful. They made a way for us to interact with each other and date in a pandemic and in a world where we're increasingly isolated. Oh my God, that's so nice. They even have a free tier. Why would they do that? You do see that the opportunity cost was that the dating market was completely destroyed. It destroyed the landscape of how people meet and communicate and have intimacy with each other. We were the cost. So ask yourself, if AI is currently free, why is that? If you've hit this point in the video, I hope you're still listening because I can give you the answer as a spoiler alert. Again, I've been in tech for a very long time and on my personal time, I study robotics and artificial intelligence. I've been studying this stuff long before ChatGPT ever came out. Here's the spoiler alert. There are companies like Boston Dynamics and Hanson Robotics that have been working on AI bots for a long time. They already have them. For example, there's one called Ameca who is a robot that can walk and talk. They've now made the movement very fluid, so they move more like us and less robotically. She can also make some 30 different facial expressions and gives you side eye and all of that, right? Do you know what powers a mecha? Chat GPT. There is a AI bot named Sophia who just got citizenship in Saudi Arabia. She has a passport. You know what's powering her? Chat GPT. So if you think that technology is free, what you are actually doing is powering it with how to be us and how to think like us and how to speak like us. And they are using it currently in 2025 to power AI bots. By the way, they already figured out silicone skin, facial expressions, hair, all of that. So enjoy it for free, but just know that no tech is ever free and there will be an opportunity cost one day. So just use it wisely. Just saying. Auntie loves you. But the thing with life is when something comes, when we let these things come, it's hard to let go of them, right? It's not very easy. The people who, you know, they benefit from these things, they do everything within their power to make sure that we cannot get rid of them because, you know, that's how they make their money. And some of us have now become very dependent on them because, like, you know, they 
they are now interwoven with our routine our day-to-day -day life this is how we make life easier for ourselves so like I, I don't know if we can get rid of ai i don't even know if you want to if i personally am going to um what it was promotes that we get rid of it because i'm saying all of this to say that no i'm not saying you're a bad person if you use ai i'm not even condemning ai because all these things are not exactly bad it's just how we use them but like he said there is a way to um you know put like checkmates these issues it's just a matter of these people that are supposed to be putting these checkmates in place are they going to do that or encouraging them to do that but these are the things we need to put into consideration i just want to quickly bring this video to you tell you what exactly i found what's going on um you know i think more people should know about this um but yeah what are your thoughts let me know down below in the comment section i'll be catching you in the next one bye there is also a longer term existential threat that will arise when we create digital beings that are more intelligent than ourselves we have no idea whether we can stay in control